you are, Ren. Like, <laughs> I feel like everyone on our team wants to be the best. Uh, wants to be the best and also feels like they are the best at their respective roles and also as a team. We definitely want that match rematch again to redeem ourselves. Hey guys, this is Pedro back with another interview covering Split 1 of the VCT Americas 2024 season. I'm here accompanied by Victor. You guys already know who, who he is, um, past guest in my channel. So, Victor, thank you so much for taking the time once again and doing this interview once again with me. You sort of already touched upon the 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 series uh, for, with you guys and Loud um, prior to the start of this entire conversation, but just sort of just rehashing a little bit, you know, um, your thoughts on just taking down Loud in such a fashion, given the fact that, of course, you know, as we all know, Loud are just coming in uh, from uh, a very late flight to LA from Europe, just trying to get reaccustomed to that. What was that like for you? Uh, so yeah, uh, for us, I'll just start with us. Um, I think it's really good for us that we won this game. Uh, starting zero one would have been really bad for us, in my opinion, for our confidence, and especially to Loud, who have basically zero practice for like two weeks. So like, it's just this is not good for us. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think today showed that. If we play like how we know how, like we know we can, like we're just gonna roll over everybody. For example, on Sunset, like I think that was probably our cleanest map ever to date on this team. Uh, and as for Breeze, I think, I think the scoreline, uh, yeah, it was like a really close game. Uh, we won both pistols, but it was still 13 11. But I think Breeze could have been definitely better for us. Uh, but on our defense, they're just winning on winning. I think basically every clutch, and it's pretty hard to like win the half when they're winning every clutch. Uh, yeah, I think the end, half ended eight, four eight, but like it could have been like six six or like even seven five for us. I think we had the read every time uh, on our defense, uh, which bomb site they would hit, and I think we had almost every time we had three there on the bomb site that they were hitting, and. They just wiped us, so that's on us. Yeah, for sure. And, of course, obviously, as you said, Breeze was the, the tightest, obviously, map within the series with Loud. I mean, you sort of touched upon a little bit about struggling on defense, you know, and the same could be said for for Loud, for, for Lau, you know, given that you guys were able to then take the entire map in the second half on attacking side. But um, reverting back to the point on, on the defense side, what do you think? was the, the biggest cause for for the struggles on that side? Uh, I think our Breeze comp is... uh The strength of our Breeze comp is definitely going to be an attack side. We have a double duelist. We have a Euro and a Jet. Uh, so defense is definitely going to be a little tricky. We don't have as much info to work with uh, as we do like with the comp that everybody runs, which is with the KO instead. Uh, we don't have the, the knife to like base, like help our defense out a little bit. Um, so our defense, it's our defense is pretty much essentially how it's gonna rely a lot on our double duelists and how well they do is, uh, and sorry, what was the other part of the question? Uh, it was general, as in biggest issues um you've seen from the team on defense side in Breeze. You know, what what team was the cause for that? I think, I think, I think the biggest thing for our defense today on Breeze was our clutches, uh. Yeah, I don't. I can. I think. I don't think I can remember a single one that went that we won. Uh, even in advantageous situations. For example, uh, it was a three v one. At Les was B main, and he won v three us. Uh, so yeah, that's a one v like one v three us on our defense. Like it's just gonna break our economy. Uh, yeah, it's gonna break our economy. I think we invested the euro into that round. So yeah, losing, not winning the round, we use like. Strong ultimates is not good for us. For sure, and, and and despite that, of course, you guys then took on took the entire series with the W, and it, it, I missed that series. On top of just covering the topics that we've been talking so far in this conversation, we've seen different agents for 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 a few members of the team. Of course, you mentioned Yoru on Ethan, but then again, you know Ethan already played Yoru a little bit before, uh, in the previous season, and then but for for this other map in Sunset. 
we saw crashes on the gecko and then demon won on the race you know it, it it's a it's a a a difference a clear difference compared to how the team fared in kickoff you know given the fact that you guys kind of were just getting into the nick of things or just trying to get to know each other um and stuff like that but um think things that you identified um during the break that necessitated the changes in agents for um uh, i mean i i don't really know exactly why that's like not my department uh but i think the conversation went something along the lines of ethan's already comfortable on your he's played it a lot before uh he's great at it and i think i think we took a lot of inspiration from watching other teams play uh play Yoru, other regions, of, like, I think it was a different region that played Yoru on Breeze. I forget which team exactly, but I think we took some inspiration from them, and then the other thing is that, uh, we, if, like, not every team runs Yoru, so not every team is going to be used to how it plays. Uh, everyone's just going to be used to this KO, KO and, like, how KO plays on that map. So, I think that's a huge reason why. Uh, and what was the second part? Takeaways from from kickoff, you know, given your tight schedule and chemistry, trying to figure out chemistry, and just trying to just work around that. Uh, yeah. So for kickoff, we lost to Sentinels. I think our biggest takeaway from that game was, well, first of all, I, in my opinion, I think we should have won. Uh, rewatching the game, I rewatched the game so many times, especially Sunset. Like, I think we win that map like nine out of ten times. And it would have been a two zero, uh. So, I don't. There wasn't too much to, to take away from that besides like, not losing to ourselves and like keeping composure, and not like playing confident, playing not playing, like like we know playing like we want to win and like playing like how we know we can. And uh, the other thing is chemistry. Like we just needed some more time. Uh, leading up to kickoff, we only had a, about one month of practice and honestly like one month is just not enough compared to like for example sentinels who have been playing this whole time the whole off season uh they've been they solidified the roster pretty early on uh pretty early on in the off season as opposed to us we got like demon one and ethan very late uh so yeah uh just just the amount of practice and just like getting used to us getting used to each other in a match setting what do you think was the biggest aspect that you feel the team worked on the most in trying to just um flesh out that chemistry kind of uh, um take away all the issues that kind of surrounded that aspect and just led to you guys just being a better overall team from kickoff um, i don't think there was one thing we specifically worked on uh actually there is the one thing uh mm -hmm. uh so, especially on sunset, we had we had uh, during kickoff, uh, during the game with Sentinels, we had the problem of in our post plans on our attack side, we were just after we took the bomb site and planned the spike, we were just so passive and just like so timid and just just waiting for the their retake to come to us, which they practiced a million times, like they've accounted for everything in their retake. And we just let that happen to us, as opposed to getting in their faces, not letting them do what they want, disrupt them, take map control away from them, uh, make them use utility. Like, for example, in at Boba, uh, instead of just sitting back and letting them use like, all their utility on us and be mean where we're just sitting there. So I think uh, that's probably the most specific thing that we worked on, like just being more aggressive, uh, especially in our post plants. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, it, 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 given the, the given how that series played out, of course, it's going to be a lot of uh, of reviews and just reflections on how what could have gone differently, what could not have gone differently. You know, what were the the biggest main factors in the team, such as that. It kind of gives me the impression that you want to face Sentinels again. You know, when the opportunity just pre presents itself. Do, do do you feel like that's the 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 number one target for you guys? You know, obviously, we want revenge. Like. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I feel like everyone on a team uh wants to be the best. Uh wants to be the best and also feels like they are the best 
at their respective roles and also as a team, like us five together. Uh, so we definitely want that match rematch again to redeem ourselves. What do you think of Sentinels winning Masters? You know, going off from that win against you guys to then winning that. You know, what did that kind of mean to you specifically? To me specifically? Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely as a competitor, it feels like terrible to see like your direct competition to take everything. Uh, but just like as like, just as a person, like not being a player, like I'm happy for them. Uh, like I know what it feels like to win, so like I'm sure, I'm sure they, I'm sure they felt great winning, especially with the crowd around them. Um, I'm happy for them. Uh, uh, many of these players have been, many of those players have been working really hard for like years and years, like without a win. For example, Zekin, like Zekin was on exit, uh, constantly losing to us on optic, and I'm sure that must have must have sucked. So I'm sh like I'm happy for them. Like it's it's a great win for them. Yeah, now rewinding or taking the conversation back towards, you know, this team, of course. Um, is this sort of similar question that I'm going to ask that is kind of similar to the one that I asked you before kickoff, looking at team's level compared to the rest of the competition, but more so this group, you know, given the fact you guys are going to be facing on Furia next week and then Leviathan, MIBR, EG, 100 Thieves, um, and then so on and so forth. Should you guys are able to, to to take on Sentinels again in the future, um, how do you view the, the the team's current level nowadays? You know, compared to the rest of the league, compared to you know be pre kickoff and stuff like that. I think, uh, well, I think America's as a region as a whole is just very strong. Like, for example, I don't know who like whoever you would rank the bottom t bottom place team in the power ranking. Like still has a chance to beat the top four teams on their good day, and if the top four, like if one of the best teams has a bad day, like they can easily lose because, like, honestly, there's not there's not that much separating, uh, teams like the best teams and like the not best teams, uh, like the differences is just so, like, minute. It's in the small de really small details. For example, like. Small like utility timing, such a small detail. Like even if you're like if if you're like a few seconds, if your timing with the utility is like a few seconds off, like you're too slightly too late or slightly too early, like that's a that's a really small detail, but it's a big thing that separates like the best teams, uh, from the not not so best teams. Uh, so. I mean, I think everyone's good. I, I, that's how I always I've I've always viewed it. Um, if you're not if my team is not having a good day or like if us as a five we're just not having a good day we're not clicking on that day like we can easily lose to almost anyone i think and i think that goes for a lot of teams and which is why it's, it's so hard to say like stay consistent and remain top especially in a game of valorant where there's so many variables and like every team is every team has five indig individually good players so yeah, I just in my point in in my opinion, everyone's just good. Like you have to you have to be on your at least your A game. Not your S game, but like at least your A game if you wanna win convincingly against anyone. Oh for sure, no doubt. You know, it's an interesting perspective to to hear and see um from you, Victor. And one more question before I wrap it up. I mean, you already talked about Sentinels and you know them being a potential opponent for you in the future but um now that you have loud out of the way taken care of first week big dub early on in the split which other team in your group kind of gives you the most wor worry uh out of all of them i uh, honestly don't know every single team in my group so you'd have to tell me that's <laughs> okay uh furia leviathan mibr eg and hundred thieves I think, I think either Leviathan or Hundred Thieves is probably gonna give us the most trouble out of those teams. Uh, I think Hundred Thieves is kind of underrated. I think, I I think on on their good days they they can probably be like one of the best teams in the region. Uh, even like even if Leviathan like despite losing today, I think Leviathan is a really strong team. Uh, like. 
if you watch the game, like there's so many like, chaotic situations didn't go their way, like and clutches as well. Like for example, Rooney's one v twoing in o- overtime, which is honestly kind of crazy. Uh, so I think I think they're a strong team as well. So I'd say those teams, those two teams. Of course, and of course, we'll be looking forward to to you guys facing off, facing off against those two teams or everyone everyone else within your group. Uh, Victor, thank you so much for taking the time again for doing this interview. Really appreciate it, and best of luck for you and the team in the future. See you next time.